Hi everybody, thanks so much for joining me, Stampin' to Creates here. Here to do a an embroidery video. I know everyone is asking, where, where are the embroidery videos? So here I am, I have um, an embroidery video today, so believe it or not. So um, I was asked by someone to um, make some baby items. Um, so many of you know that I have an account through Creative Fabrico. I think that's the name of it. Huh. <coughs> I think that's the name of it. Anyhow, I will put a link below to where I got the design. So this is a real cute design. Um, this person that asked me, she's into honeybees. So she said, can you maybe make some baby things with a honeybee? So, of course, this was the first place I went because I have a subscription. And um, I've been happy so far with the um, designs that I've stitched out. So I will put a link below where you can get the design. And um, I think it's super cute. Um... So let me show you um, what I have created. So this is the design right here, this cute little honeybee. Um, I, it came in three different sizes. So I'm doing the smallest one, which is using the five by seven hoop um, because they're baby items and they're just small little bibs. And um, actually I surprised myself. I did a baby onesie. I was a nervous wreck, but um, let me move you over here. Okay, so then I can show you. So now we don't know what, um, if it's a, it's going to be a little girl or a little boy. So i um, trying to show you. Here is the cute design. This is a um, onesie, a zero to three month onesie. Let me see if I hold it up that way. And the onesie, I don't even know. I probably got it through Amazon. Isn't it cute? So uh, we're kind of going with a neutral tone. So this is kind of like uh, an ivory color. So I did that and I was super excited because, um, you know, a five by seven hoop and, you know, trying to, to do this so that it doesn't, you know, get messed up, you know, but I think I did good. Now here's a burp cloth. The burp cloth I also got on Amazon and um, I had a, like a whole couple pack of them. But let me show you the back because everybody's always, oh, I want to see the back. So here's the back. And I used a mesh stabilizer, a cutaway mesh. So let me bring you up a little bit closer so you can see. Now on the baby onesie and maybe even on here, but maybe not, I don't know. They have stuff that you can put over this. It's called Tender Touch. And this way it'll make it, because it's kind of like hard and, you know, uh, of course this will be over... Uh, whoever's holding the baby to burp with, but um, on the onesie for sure, I'm going to have to get some of that. So isn't it cute? This is kind of a waffle weave um, burp cloth. So I thought, well, those are cute. Now I did send um, the stitch out design to her to show her and I'm still waiting to hear back, but I'm in the meantime, I thought I'd just make a couple things if she's not happy with it, no problem. I can just go ahead and have an upcoming craft show I'm gonna be doing. And um, I can just sell them at the craft show. So off Amazon, I know I do have the packaging to this. Let me grab it. I, um, I purchased some baby bits. So if you're new to machine embroidery, this is a great um, type of item to start with. So these are, here are the baby bibs. And I know I should open a store in Amazon because I refer people there all the time. I can make a commission off it, but I don't. They're called Neat Solutions, um, three month plus, uh, 10 baby bibs. Um, here is the UPC code, if that helps you. So like I said, they're great to practice with. So I thought, you know what, let's try the uh, design on there. So here's my five by seven hoop and my tear away mesh stabilizer. So I buy it on a big roll. Here's the roll, big, huge roll. I don't even have the um, label for it because um, this stuff lasts forever. Well, I guess it'll only last as long as you um, are using it. <laughs> if you don't use it, it will last forever, <laughs> right? So that's the reasoning with that. So here I have a cutaway mesh stabilizer and my five by seven hoop. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna float this bib in here and I have my ceiling fan on, so it's kind of blowing everything all over the place. But um, let's go ahead. And I did purchase a microphone. However, I moved my craft room around and 
do you think I could find it before I went live? I cannot. So rather than aggravate myself, I just decided, you know, just gonna have to talk loud. That's all when the machine gets rocking. So there we are, we have that. Now, if you feel a little uncomfortable, you can go ahead and do a double mesh if that makes you feel better. So you know what I'm probably going to do is I'm probably gonna do a little spray stabilizer on here. So let me grab that. Kind of all over the place today. So today is Sunday. What is today's date? Sunday, May 23rd, 2021. A lot of people watch my videos and um, you guys are watching a lot of old videos. So when you ask questions about it, I'm like, oh my gosh, that was the first machine I had like probably like almost two years ago, that PE 535. So if you're watching those, those are pretty old. So I'm trying to remember to, um, to put like a date. So here's what I'm using. Um, I don't know if you can see that. It's called uh, Odif 505 Temporary Adhesive for Fabric. And uh, no stain, acid-free, no CFC. Make sure whatever you're going to purchase, um, you, that it is safe for, um, for fabric, for stitching, that kind of thing. I have a lot of luck with this. Now I'm going to move this away from my machine because I don't want to spray a spray adhesive all around my machine, but I'm going to kind of spray this area. I'm going to go off to the side here. My dog always gets a little concerned when I'm doing something like that. So I think she's going to be leaving me. So there it is, a little spray adhesive. So here's our baby bib. Now I'm going to leave the label on, but I don't think, I don't think it'll interfere at all. So now you may wonder, um, how are you going to do this? So I'm going to take it and I'm going to, um, let me fold it in half right sides together. Okay. This is a little awkward because I'm trying to, um, do it so you guys can see. All right. So now I folded it lengthwise. Now the, these frames have these little lines on here, top and bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of align it so that that is in the center. And again, this is, you know, if I had a desk, I would have a little bit more ability. So I have it aligned top and bottom and I'm going to open this up and I'm going to stretch this out. Well, not stretch it out, open it up, press it down, and take a look see at it. Does it look straight? Hmm, maybe not. So, um, it'll lift up. Gosh, there goes a bunch of motorcycles down the road. So, it is hot here in PA today. Um, I got my yard work done and things like that yesterday so that I had some time today that I could craft. Okay, that looks good to me. All right, so this and these have Velcro on them. So I'm just gonna leave that all open. I'm going to go ahead and put it in the hoop, slide it in. You have to make sure this little lever goes down. Okay. So I don't know why, it's kind of not looking straight to me. Just fix this again. Okay, let's... Now you can go ahead and, you know, if you wanna mark this up with a, um, a marker that kind of disappears. You can go ahead and do that. Um, I'm just kind of eyeballing it today. I don't even know if she's even going to like this design. Okay, so my B is over here on the screen. Oh, I have an itchy nose. I'm going to get in a fight. So what I want to do is I want to make sure, I want to see where this is going to stitch out on here. And when I get to where I'm going to stitch, I'll, I will move you over. I was looking to see if that's equal on both sides. All right. Well, I think it's, I think it looks good. Okay. So, um, I'm going to press and I have a different stand here, so it's not as easy to move around. So this little, um, symbol down here, that's going to do a, a stitch around. So let me move you back over here so you can see what I'm talking about. So I'm going to hit that and it's going to show me where it's going to stitch out. Okay, so see, that's going to be too high. Okay, so I'm going to close that out. And I'm going to go over on the machine here. Where it has all these little buttons. So I want to move it down. 
Okay, so move it there. Now I'm gonna go back to this little um, square block. Let's go back over here and oops. Let's see, oh, that looks like maybe too low. Let's see. Yep, we could go up a little bit more. So you just have to kind of adjust up and down. All right, I'm gonna close that up and going back and gonna move it up a little bit more. All right, let's go back again. Okay, so what you can also do is it has little lines going around it. So if you want to go straight across and figure this is where it's going to be and all the way to the other end and this is where it's going to be and that looks good to me, dead center. All right, I'm going to go ahead and say that that looks good to me. So I'm going to close that out and the first color thread I'm going to use is a yellow and this is what's called an applique design so it has fabric incorporated in it so it's not a total stitch out so you add fabric to it you trim it away and um, it stitches around it and once you get your applique down and everything then you go ahead and do all the fine details so let me go ahead and get you guys in here situated so you can see all right, I think that looks good. I hope that's good. So we got everything ready. We got our design down. We got a design in the machine. We got our placement. We got our thread. We're threaded. We're needled. All good to go. So I'm going to put the foot down and we're going to get started. Now, I didn't check my bobbin, but I think I should be okay. But one thing with this machine is when it gets down to low bobbin, it will tell you. So you have to take into accommodation with this design that it has antennae that come out of the top. So um, I think it's gonna look good. And I have a white bobbin thread in here. So it does a stitch out and what it's showing you is where you want to put your fabric. to tell you this is a 17 minute stitch and uh, let me get my fabric I've been using this fabric that oh I think I got it off Etsy it's kind of cute um, I use it when I made the bee coaster and um, I don't know I kind of like it so I hope she does too if not like I said these will be for sale at the craft show okay so I got my fabric down I don't know why I hit that. I hit the wrong thing. I'm going to put my foot down. I do that all the time. So now it's going to stitch the fabric down. And then we're going to have to, well, I'm going to have to cut the fabric out. Cut around the fabric, I should say. one more little stitch down in the corner for the other foot okay all right so the next step with this design is I need to cut all around those stitched areas to make my life easier first off I'm going to cut the fabric and I know many years saying oh my gosh you're wasting all that fabric well you know this bottom piece can be used again if it's a decent sized piece you know I'll go ahead and see but if not then um, 
you know, it just goes into the, um, uh, uh, what am I starting to say here? The, the, um, kind of like the garbage, you know, <laughs> All right. unless you want to put it out for the birds. So there is no easy way to do this. And me being able to show you, because when you're trimming, you want to lift the fabric, trim close to the stitching without getting into the design of it. So the easiest thing to do is to take the hoops, take the hoop out of the machine and not out of the hooping, just out of the machine. Let me get rid of this little piece down here because that's what's goofing me up. And I know I've had people comment before, oh, you trimmed it, we couldn't see what you're doing. Well, it's just trimming the fabric around the stitch mark. So it's not rocket science, trust me. Just wanna snip as close as you can. And let me do this. And then I'll bring it back. Okay, so I got rid of that. So can you see how um, I'm just stitching as close as I can to the design? So I'm going to continue that and right where the camera is is where my hand keeps hitting. <laughs> I'm trying to show you, but I also want to do a good job, right? Especially when you're making it for someone. If I was just doing it for myself, well, I'd still want to do a good job, but I wouldn't be so meticulous. Oops, and I apologize for hitting the camera, but there's not too much I can do about that if you want to see. <sighs> okay, and there's a couple little pieces. Let me bring it up close to my face. <sighs> All right, I think that is pretty good. All right. Now, calls for this next step, which is kind of machine next step is kind of going to add like two more extra applique pieces and i'm just going to use the same fabric i used before but first we're going to, it's going to do a stitch to show you where it's going to be and i don't really understand it i have time just think i should just you know go ahead and just leave the fabric in there and stitch around it but so be it So it doesn't look like much yet. Not until you start doing all the fine details. All right. Okay, so let's go ahead. Now I did see right here, I can use a little bit more trimming, a little bit closer. So let me just bring that up to myself. Okay. All right, so now I'm gonna lay down my fabric. And I'm just going to put it there. So this is that scrap that you thought I was going to throw away. Nope. Put it back down. We're going to let it stitch out these other two little spots. Now, she did also request a blanket. So I did purchase a blanket. Um, they didn't have it in the beige color. I did get a yellow one. But, um, Again, I'm still waiting to hear back from her whether or not she likes this design before I go and um, do any more bibs or blankets, you know, kind of thing. All right, these are short stitch. Okay. So now I'm gonna trim them out and they're real teeny tiny. So again, I have to do my best to um, trim this out. So a lot of times when people are, um, they ask you, they request, you know, can you, can you do this? Can you do that? Um, and my answer usually to them is if I can get it in my hoop, you could pretty much do it. So, um, can't see what I'm doing here. And I don't know what happened to my one little light, but my other little lamp that I have here had it on the other night and then when it came back the next night 
it wouldn't turn on. I checked the plugs, checked everything. Oh gosh, I got to take this over here. I'm sorry, because I can't see there. Um, and it wouldn't turn on. I got up the next morning, getting ready for work, and I'm thinking, boy, it's bright. I mean, I, I know I put new window treatments on my windows in here, so the light comes in so I can see. Well, here it was the darn light turned on. So then I turned it off. So I went to work and I came home, came back in my craft room and the light wouldn't go on again. So I checked the bulb, the bulb looks okay. Like, you know, sometimes, you know, that little line thingy in the bulb, there we go. You know, it blows out and you could, you know, you kind of shake it and you could kind of hear it. Well, I didn't hear it, nothing. I don't know. This I think is possessed. I don't know. Okay, so let me change my thread. So we're going from yellow. We're going to go to blue. And um, I kind of like this brighter blue. Here's the blue I'm using. Um, and it's, uh, this is bro thread that I'm using today. This is the N217. The yellow I was using was from uh, Thread Nanny. And that one was 206. So um, this is going to do the little wings. And I kind of like this bright blue on here. I don't know. The bright blue just kind of, I don't know. I like it. It does recommend, let me see, a uh, number 542. I don't know what that number, what um, thread that is. I didn't really want to go through the trouble, pardon me, of finding it. So, okay. Now the wings are really cool that it does. So let's take a look at that. So I haven't been doing a lot of embroidery lately. Um, I've been working a lot with my Stampin' Up! business and uh, been posting a few videos on that. Um, I actually got a thumbs down on one of them the other day, uh, yesterday's. And you know what? People may think that thumbs down really hurts YouTube um, people, YouTube presenters, but you know what? It actually does not because any type of interaction on your YouTube channel it just shows uh, YouTube itself that people are watching and they're, you know, uh, being a part of the channel. So um, I did make a comment on the last video that I just uploaded my paper pumpkin alternatives that, you know, the thumbs, the thumbs down people aren't harming me any because it shows you're still watching, right? So anyhow, um, I wanna thank everybody, all my new subscribers. I really do appreciate you. I appreciate you watching. I appreciate all those that comment. It's really surprising to me as to how many people watch the videos that, um, you know, uh, they request more videos or they live not too far away from me. Um, I'm in the northeastern part of Pennsylvania and um, I didn't know there was a lot of embroidery folks out there. So um, thank you everybody for leaving the comments, kind words, encouragement, um, special requests, those kinds of things. If I can find it, I can do it. Um, if you need any help with anything, I'm more than willing to help. Those of you that have asked questions before, you know that I try my best to help you out in any way that I can. Or if I don't know the answer, I can refer you to, you know, where you can go and find out about it. So as we're stitching this, these, um, the applique part is all done. The rest is all the fine detail, which is what brings the whole design to light. Life. I'm sorry, life. <laughs> so, um, it's really fun to watch. I don't know. Um, those of you that do it, you know, do, do you like to sit and watch it come, come alive? It's like it's coming alive. I do. Um, another thing is I have learned in the past by not walking away from my machine because the moment you walk away is the moment something is going to happen whether in thread breaks which it will stop or a needle break or something um when I was just doing the uh the first was I doing no I was doing the onesie um there was an issue with the thread kind of like bunched up or whatnot now if i wasn't sitting right here watching it i would have missed that and who knows the whole thing could have been ruined but um you learn you live and learn i 
All right. Okay, so next up we're gonna be doing the black. Now the black um, color is really gonna bring the design to light. It's gonna start bringing in more and more of those fine details. It's a good thing to keep a little lint roller in your um, embroidery room, your craft room, because the lint roller, you can roll it right over the design. It'll pick up all those stray little pieces of thread, things like that. Um, I have actually a little tiny ladybug vacuum that I use on my desk when I'm doing my stamping projects because it picks up all those little fine um, pieces of cardstock or um, if you're doing embossing, it picks up that. So it's good to have that. You can use a lint brush for that as well. Okay, here we go with the black. The black is going to have a three minute stitch out. This is not too bad a stitch out, actually. And you know, what? I'm going to stop it before it goes any further because it leaves this big, long piece of black thread. And I want to get rid of that so it doesn't get intertwined with something else. So it's kind of odd how it does these first couple stitches because it does these huge jumps. Just a few of them. And then it goes on its merry way. So um, I actually signed up uh, for an online um, digitizer class. I think it's, yeah, I'm just double check to make sure. It's going to be in June. It's going to be all online. And um, yeah, it's a few hours, I think. So um, I always said I never wanted to learn how to digitize. And if you're wondering, what is digitizing? That is creating the program to make these designs. Well, not the program, um, the design. To create the design, it teaches you how to, you know, go in and the different types of stitches and how to create a design like this. So I thought, you know, I know one little class is not going to teach me everything. But um, who knows, you, you know, you could pick up little tips or, or maybe, you, know, you always learn a few things. <coughs> oh my gosh, let me get a drink, hold on. You know, the whole thing with um, crafting, whether it's embroidery or scrapbooking or paper crafting or crocheting, anything that you do, knowledge is power. So the more you know about something, the more power you have in knowing how to do things with that knowledge. So if I ever have an opportunity to take a class, and this is all online, this one, take a class or, or to broaden my horizon in some way, I'm all about that. I think that that's a great thing. And um, so that's why YouTube has really helped out myself as well as you know um, other people I know especially during this whole pandemic I mean we didn't have a whole lot of ability to attend things and to learn things but from the comfort of your own home and watching YouTube videos you, know, you really can learn a lot I've learned how to do I mean I'm by no means um, any anything as far as maintenance on my home but um, I have learned how to do simple little tasks you know, that aren't life-threatening, uh, such as caulking the bathtub or that, you know. I mean, I've learned how to do that by watching a YouTube video. And it was actually a woman that, that was doing it. So I thought, well, there you go. I can do it. If she can do it, I can do it, right? So um, the internet is really um, used for a lot of good things. So unfortunately, there are bad things out there as well. We all know that. Um, for instance, uh, and I see that thread there. I'm going to grab that because the eye is very quick stitch. Uh, last Sunday, my um, account, my bank account was hacked. So, you know, it's like, and so I was at the bank and got that all situated. And, you know, apparently it was a huge hacking, but I really haven't heard much about it on the news. <sighs> there we go. Okay, what's next? Oh, we're going to be using white next. Okay. But um, you just have to be careful. If only those people put their talents to good use as opposed to, um, you know, bad things, the world would be a better place. But 
from what the bank manager told me. He said they make more money doing bad with it than good, but which is sad. But um, so be vigilant, be careful with um, where you share your information, where you share um, your credit card on file, things like that. Those are the things they go after. And what they do is they uh, charge a small amount on your account and then they wait and see what happens. So if you don't catch it, next thing you know, um, they're, you know, they're in there. They'll wipe your whole account out. So we're doing white, just the little whites of the eyes. This is a quick stitch. Okay, I'm going to trim that white as soon as <clears throat> it's finished there. But can you, you can see how this design is just coming to life, right? So we got some eyes in there, a little highlight of the eye with a little bit of white thread. Okay, next we're gonna use um, a dark gold color. And this is 214 by Thread Nanny. This is gonna do the inner part of the legs, kind of where there would normally be a type of shadow. Although, you know, if you don't want that, hey, it's your bee. You can make your bee any color you want it to be. You be you. How about that? All right, so let's go ahead and do that. This is so cute. Oh my gosh, I hope she likes this design. I showed her a picture of it before I did it, and I told her, give me a couple days. Let me do a little stitch out, see how the design works. This is just doing the inner part of the leg there. I'm interested to see what it would look like a big, you know, a, the large size. So this is what, a uh, five by seven. Oh, I don't know how big it goes up to six by 10 maybe or bigger. I think this would fit in a, no, no, it won't fit in a four by four hoop. So maybe the, who knows what, I forget what the largest size is, but there's three different sizes. I know that. So probably when I do the, the blanket, I'll probably do a larger size on it. Just see what looks good on it. I think I'm going to have to be changing my needle on my um, machine pretty soon. Okay. There we go with that. Now the next stitch is going to be the yellow that we started with. Of course, you can use whatever color you want to use. This is going to do the whole outline. So this one is going to take seven minutes. Then after that, all we're left with is the antenna. And there's a little, I don't know if it's like the nose mouth area kind of thing. That's only a real quick stitch. And we're done. Okay. All right. There we go. Oh, it's like looking like it's wanting a storm or something out there. It's very cloudy, windy, but it's very humid. So I kind of debated doing my um, my yard work yesterday, but I just forced myself to it. I asked a friend of mine if he'd like to come and do my yard work. <laughs> and he said he had to do his yard work and maybe tomorrow. Well, I don't want to wait on that because they figured that was like not going to happen but I've been having some issues with my hands um I have a full-time job this is not my full-time job although I wish it were um I do transcription work for um orthopedic surgeons and um I've been doing it working for them oh about 22 years maybe and before that I worked at one of our local hospitals and um I just been having a lot of trouble with the tendons in my hands and pain and swelling and so uh, they they sent me for occupational therapy and I've been going to that for the past two weeks, uh, two days a week and having um, home exercises to do and I see a big improvement already. So um, there are some days I come home from work 
and um, I just have so much pain in my hands and I'm just so exhausted and tired and so there are days when I don't even step in my craft room so that's another reason why you haven't seen a whole lot of me um, that and trying to keep up with work with the stamping up business um, craft show things and just coming home and resting so I have splints that I wear at night and um, you know I think they're helping so um, I had a little reprieve on Friday in that you know a couple of doctors were off so I was able to work a half day and take a half day off where I had to go you know for therapy I had to go to the bank I had to go to the store I had to go a couple places um, then I had a class at night. I taught a class here at my home with the stamping. So it's been kind of busy. So those of you who are like, keep the videos coming. I'm, I'm doing my best, but I don't want to get myself too burnt out. So I hope you um, all take that into account where, where I've been. You know, it's a lot easier in the winter time to do things because I don't have outside work to do. Um, I mean, running a house and doing inside work, outside work, working full time, doing a part time business, doing embroidery. I mean, I need more hours in my day. Uh, it just gets a little overwhelming sometimes where I just have to sit back and not do anything, but maybe watch a movie or some, you know, but uh, summertime is usually a lot harder, you know, unless the weather is too, too hot where I'm not, I don't like the hot weather. I don't know about you guys. Do you guys like the hot weather? I don't like the cold, cold weather. I'm kind of a spring and fall person, but anymore, it just seems like you go right for winter to like crazy weather where it's, you know, 20 degrees one day, 60 degrees another day, back to 30 degrees. I mean, it's, the weather's just been nuts, and I don't think that's helping my hands either, because I do have rheumatoid arthritis. But the doctor said, no, this is not arthritis. These are the overuse syndrome from typing all day, and that's what I do at work. I type all day long. So the embroidery kind of gives me a, a chance to rest my hands a little bit there's there's no way you can possibly rest your hands at all you know it's not like you know your leg or something where you can rest it I mean your hands you need to work with your hands all the time so I think wearing the splints at night where you are forced because your hands are locked into those splints they are forced not to move and to rest so um, so that's my story that's what's been going on um, I still do love the stamping. I still do love the machine embroidery. I just wish I had some more some more hours in my day to do it. And a lot of times you come from work. You know, I'm going to be 60. Oh my gosh, I'm going to be 60 in July. My birthday's in July. And it's just even hard for me to even say that because I remember when when my mom was 60 and I thought, wow, she you know she was old. <laughs> But then when it when it becomes you to be 60, you're like, well, that's not that old, right? How many can relate to that? Raise your hand. I know you're out there. I see the uh, stats when I go in and I, I wanted to look and see, like, what's the age range of people that watch my videos? And a lot of them, you know, a lot of you out there are, you know, um, you're not teenagers. <clears throat> you're, um, you know, 40 or over. So... I know a lot of you can relate or will be relating to the things that I say <clears throat> either now or in the future. Anyhow, that's the way it goes, right? Oh my gosh, this is so cute. See how it's just coming together? All these fine little details. So I think we got one more lake to do and then some antenna. Antennae, I suppose. Now, they do recommend you do the antennae in um, number 704, which is a dark gray. But I decided I like to do it in black because I like it to really stand out. And he really does look like he's missing something without them. Like, he's kind of like, you know, like he has a very large forehead. 
Do you think he has a large forehead? <laughs> I do. But he's just so darn cute. He, she, whatever. So cute. I did find another bee design on that website. Um, I haven't stitched it out yet because I, I don't know. I just fell in love with this little guy. So I don't know. I may stitch one out just to see. I have enough bibs, right? Bibs are always a great little gift for someone that had a new baby. And the, the, the best thing about machine embroidery is you can customize these. Now, we don't know... Um, what the sex of this baby is going to be um, that I'm making these for. But um, you could just make it a neutral gender. Like, you know, go with white, go with beige, um, yellow, green. I mean, even like a powder blue, that could go for a girl or boy even, you know? Hey, who does, who's who's not to say that a, a little boy can't wear a pink bib? I know. Well, there's not many men that watch me, but if there's any men watching, they'd be like, hey, you know, come on, you know. But anymore, anything goes. You know, even this little bee. You can make this bee, you know, a pink bee. Okay, we're going to do the black. You can make it a you know, the yellow bee, a blue bee, purple bee, whatever color bee you want it to be. You bee, whatever bee color you want it to be. So this is what's going to make it now. These little antenna. Oh my gosh. Now you can, if this was a lot thicker nap on here, I probably would have put a piece of the uh, clear uh, stabilizer right over the top of the design before it stitches. But this is a very low pile on here and um, we won't need to because that, they did a great job digitizing the antenna because um, it's not just one little stitch, you know, it kind of goes over a couple times, does a little satin stitch on it, so. So they really stand out with the, with the black, I think. And he's just so darn cute, just makes you smile. And in 17 minutes, you can have a designed <coughs> bee of your own. Alrighty. It kind of does a little tiny few little dots there for the nose. And you're done. And look at that. That might be a little too close for you guys. Let me bring you back a little bit. There you go. You see that? So let's check out the back. Not too bad. You know, you go ahead and trim up those stitches. Well, not the stitches, the threads. You don't want to cut any of the stitches. So see these big long ones? Just kind of go along and trim some of those. And again, my ceiling fan's on, so it's kind of going to blow them away. And if you wanted to put, you know, a little of that tender touch, it's just a little iron-on, real soft kind of fabric that goes over the back, protects it. Um, but I would think most of the time when people are using, well, when babies are putting bibs, that they're going to have a shirt or something. But if you're concerned about that. Okay, so let's go ahead. And we're all done. Everything looks good. Ooh, I really tighten that up. Take it out of the hoop. Put our hoop back here. So here's all this extra stabilizer. So now this is the part that I have to, I try to be very cautious. So I have a little bit of that sticky stable, sticky uh, spray that I use. I'm just going to kind of pull this away a little bit. And then we're going to trim all around this. And you just have to be careful not to cut your bib, right? So she says. So your best bet is to kind of fold it back 
and then just trim around get most of the excess off then you can go back in with your little fine scissors and trim in a little bit closer I'm not even sure if you're seeing all this but I mean you're just trimming trimming around the basic design of it and then I'll I'll go back in under bright lights to trim out the rest okay here we go all right so I will go back in and trim inside these little pieces I use my fine scissors but um, let's see if we have any threads a couple little little ones clean up your work wherever you find you may have a little extra something and then you're done isn't it so cute oh my gosh okay so there is our baby bed now this is where your little lint roller will come in handy let's go ahead and do the velcro on here and there it is there is your cute little bee design baby bib. So what little baby wouldn't be thrilled to drool all over that? <laughs> right? I think I did eh, pretty good in centering. I might be off a, a, a little bit, but you know what? You have to take into consideration you have like that and you have the bottom of the foot, you know, so it's not like it's a square design, you know, let me put this on here. And uh, I think it's cute. I think any baby would be proud to wear that. And any mom would love to get that as a gift. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope this fills the void. Again, I apologize for being so <sighs> lax from doing videos. But I do promise I, I will do videos when I can as time allows. And um, I want to thank you all very, very much for your support of my channel for watching, for commenting, for giving me thumbs up and uh, subscribing, of course, and uh, just watching and just being, just being the people that you are. Very nice, very nice people that watch my channel. So thank you again for taking time to watch my channel. And um, I hope you stay safe out there. Things are getting a little bit better in the world, but don't let your guard down. Still be vigilant and follow whatever your state's um, recommending for you to do. And um, I wish you all a great day. And I'll see you back here again real soon. Bye-bye for now.